Travelling north over the moorland into South Ayrshire, into an area known as Carrick, we pass Bar Hill and take the road on to Gowvin. Interestingly, this road intertwines with the railway and the eleven arches of the Kinclair Viaduct. Built in 1876, it is one of only two structures in the whole of the UK where the main road passes under the viaduct twice. At Asselfoot, the water of the Assel joins the River Stinshire. This was the original site of Pinmore, and a castle once stood at this confluence. Hidden away another mile on is Pinmore Celtic Church, with a memorial to Captain Hugh Hamilton. Another mile or so is the ancient ford at Duljarrach. Pilgrims crossed here, journeying between Whithorn and Cross Ragual Abbey, near Maybole, in the Middle Ages. Further on are the remains of Dinvin Mott, an Iron Age stronghold, probably the finest ancient earthworks in Ayrshire. It is situated on a dominating ridge and consists of a central mound defended by two well-defined circular ramparts and four metre deep ditches. A mile further is the small Clachan of Pinmore, with its village green picnic area and old school. A few miles on to Gervin, the main centre for rural South Carrick. At Knock Cushion Street is the site of a famous Pictish fort, which was used as a seat of justice. King Robert the Bruce, Earl of Carrick, held court here and granted a charter to the Friars of Ayr in 1328. Robert the Bruce was the fourth Earl of Carrick, a title which even today is one of the many currently awarded to Prince Charles. A favourite holiday destination between the wars, Gervin still boasts a delightful, busy working harbour, which these days offers a safe haven for leisure craft. Noble's Boatyard is the only surviving working boatyard in the west of Scotland, south of Oban. Boat trips run from the harbour some nine miles to Ailsa Craig, a volcanic core which at over 1,000 foot high looms out of the water between here and the Isle of Arran. Complete with its amazing gannet colony of some 70,000 birds and the former quarry for the famous granite curling stones. It has been written about by both Keats and Wordsworth, but only mentioned by Burns in an ironic aside. It is also known as Paddy's Milestone, owing to its position en route to Ireland. Five miles south of Gervin is Levelfoot. This was home to the cannibal Sonny Beam and his family. Leaving Garvin, take the minor road inland to Daly. Daly is an area of great geological richness. Hugh Miller, the pioneer geologist, visited and wrote enthusiastically about his findings in the 1850s. From the 14th century until 1977, over a hundred mines operated hereabouts. A notable local lad was Jock Thompson, the landscape painter and friend of Sir Walter Scott who lived with his wife and her numerous children in Durrigsden. The phrase, we're all Jock Tamson's bairns, is attributed to him. The Italian painter and poet, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, stayed at nearby Penkill Castle, and he even tried to commit suicide during his visit. This area is dominated by the majestic ruin of Dalhuaran Castle that sits on a high bank, a great mansion of Adam design. Old Daly lies some three miles southwest, the churchyard contains the graves of some covenanters, and the blue stones are said to have the power to heal and bring good fortune. Whilst the barren stone is a 37-tonne chunk of granite deposited by a glacier from Loch Dune, it was also an important seat of justice. The nearby Calochan Castle has been the seat of the Cathcarts since 1317. Indeed, this area seems to have an abundance of castles in one form or another. Golf is on the doorstep, with the option of Turnbury, home to the 2009 Open, some six miles away on the coast road. A short distance on from Turnbury is the magnificent Culane Castle, set on a clifftop perch. It was commissioned by the Earl of Cassilis and built by Robert Adam over a 20-year period and completed in 1792. At the end of World War II in 1945, the estate came into the hands of the National Trust and a top-floor flat was gifted to General Dwight Eisenhower, the supreme commander of the Allied forces in Europe. The grounds, castle and estate attract over half a million visitors every year. Nearby is Electric Bray or Croy Bray, an effective optical illusion as the road gives the impression of going downhill when it is actually going up. It was thought this had some connection with electricity, hence the name, 
but this is now known not to be the case. Take care, as you are likely to encounter puzzled motorists freewheeling uphill to satisfy their curiosity.